So good morning. This is another frequently asked questions that we've had about the choice grids. So we've talked about transparent links and dropping in links. Uh, but one of the questions we've had a lot of is how do we link some of those other pieces? Um, so if I'm wanting to do a check in with my students, if I'm wanting to link to something I have somewhere else. So uh, when we start, those web-based links, if it's somewhere on the internet, are super easy. So I've already dropped in my uh, video clip, um, my TED Talk, but I have a couple other things here that I want to link. So the first piece here is I want to link to a check-in before they start. And that's why I used a different color, just so it can differentiate. Probably should have been a bit brighter. So let's just put our transparent shape on top of that really quickly. I'm using the fill bucket and the border to be transparent. So for this, I want to do a check-in. I'm actually going to use a question in Google Classroom. So when uh, questions will track who's um, answered and who hasn't, um, great way to kind of see who you can, who you want to connect with that week. Uh, but it also gives us this cool class graph uh, and then I can have individual conversations, private comments with learners as well. So questions are a great way to do those quick check for understanding uh, if you're using Google Classroom. Now, traditionally in Google Classroom, when we come in, we're in our stream, but if I go to classwork and I'm here on my um, question, I see my three dots and I can copy a link. Now this doesn't change anything, it's still in your classwork, it's still organized, it's still in your stream, uh, but for my learners, they can go directly to that task. So if the visual uh, format of a choice grid is helpful, it takes them straight there. It helps that navigation. So I'm going to use my link again, I'm going to paste it in and apply, and now it will go straight to that task. So that's just one hack to bring in some of that, um, those quick assessment pieces, those quick check-ins, and be able to explore. Now, we can do that with anything in Google Classroom. So if I'm um, doing it with a Dropbox, uh, if I have materials, uh, anything like that, you can kind of direct them to. So that's one way that we could link and capture some of those thinking, uh, some of those pieces. Another piece though, may be that we wanna use a Google form. Uh, so if we do have a Google form, the purpose for a Google form would really be if I wanna ask several questions. I've seen great examples of three, two, ones. Um, in this one, I just made it so that we can submit a file. So if they're doing a little maker activity, uh, and then just two questions of something they learned in a question they have, so that we could use their questions to uh, build or design our next collections. So in this case, I would click on my send and grab that link in the middle with the chain, shorten the URL, that's just so I don't have as much to deal with, um, and I can link that instead. And we won't, just for the fun of it. <laughs> okay, so, Forms work great, uh, classwork works great. For anything that's a file, a PDF, uh, a Jamboard, a Google Doc, a Google Slide, you wanna remember that there's three ways that you can share. So I can view a file, which means I'm just accessing it, I just can see it. If it's a PDF, um, everything's kind of viewable because I could download it and work on it, um, download it and explore it. If I want us all to explore, I want to set something to edit. So let's go back here for a second. So I have a Jamboard here uh, for We Are Grateful. I want this for the whole class. I want us all to be adding to the same uh, gratitude wall so that we have this collection. And Jamboard's a perfect fit because they can add a quick sticky or add an image um, from any device and we can have this collective page. If I wanted my friends to have their own version, I want to copy the file or force a copy. That means that every learner gets their own version. So um, if I was doing something like, sorry, I thought I had this ready. If I was doing something like an I see, I think I wonder, uh, 
and I had it open already. <laughs> Our motto, Messy Authentic Learning, is continuing. Uh, so if I had an IC, I think I wonder template ready to go. Anytime in the near future. There we go. Uh, something like this, I don't want to, I may want to do it for the whole class. So we may do edit and we're all adding. Uh, or maybe I want to capture their own ideas. So for that, I may um, use the copy option. And really, how we force that copy will depend it on your learners. So let's go through that. So on my choice grid here, I want to um, co-create this I'm grateful for. So I have my Jamboard, and it's the same in any Google Doc. We're going to look for that share option. Right now, this uh, I already changed the setting, so I'm just going to go into change to show. By default, it's usually just set to you or only specific people. Um, I'm going to set it to anyone with the link. Just means it's not Google Googleable, um, but if they have, if they click on the link, any I don't need to worry about account settings. Uh, and I'm going to set it to can edit. Now I could also leave that to anyone in Peel, just so that it. Um, it tells me who's added or who's taken that away. It's really up to you and your, your group. So I can save that now and take that link and come into my choice grid and link it and apply. So now my choice grid is going to take them uh, to this interactive piece. So that's one option. Now, like we said, uh, if I just wanted them to see it, I'm going to set those settings to can view instead of can edit. Um, and I can change those settings over time. So we could always switch that back to can view once a week is over. Now, how do we do copy? Now, there's two ways we could do a copy. I can take that link and I can uh, paste that link in here at Let's do it here with IC, I think I wonder. So again, our share is in the same spot. And I have my link already set to everyone can edit. So I want to be careful when I'm sharing this. I can copy. Just open a new window here. It's a bit hard to see, but at the end of this uh, URL, it says edit and then a bunch of sharing. So if I highlight that, I can say copy. What that does is it forces a copy. Now, this works if they all get their own version, but it's still just theirs. So great if I'm just trying to help. Um, guide my students to a framework that would help their family navigate the learning. If I really want to track that learning, I want to make sure I'm assigning it in an assignment. And in that assignment, um, and I'm taking all of this off because that's not really... Um, what are you wondering? So I'm going to add from my Google Drive. And I do need to take it from my Google Drive even if you have the link, because when I pick the file, I can then decide how the students interact with it. So I can make a copy for each student. This means I'll be able to track their work and they can hit submit when they're done. It really is just knowing um, your learners, how they're navigating your space, how comfortable they are, and really building up as we build our uh, digital toolbox, allowing kids to build that digital toolbox as well. Um, as there's a lot of pieces in these environments uh, that maybe they haven't interacted with it just yet. So giving them that chance to navigate and feel comfortable. That's why I love the questions and things like the Jamboard because they're easy entry points for us to navigate and learn together. So hopefully that gave you a couple ideas of how you can link um, and demystified some of those sharing settings. And if you have other questions, let us know.